What's going on, everybody? It's me again. Listen up. Um, I'm so I was going to my storage facility today, Saturday, uh, March the fifth, two thousand and twenty-two, and I ran into a traffic signal that was not working. So people were treating it as a four-way stop. This was a very common thing around town um, three weeks ago when we had our ice storm. And so, uh, and which was especially dangerous because at night when the, uh, when there were power outages all over town and, uh, there were no street lights, uh, people couldn't see at night sometimes if they were coming up on a traffic signal. So there were numerous traffic accidents, uh, around town, of course, more than usual, not only because of the tough sledding, but because of the fact they would just they wouldn't be aware that they were coming up on a traffic signal where people are treating it as a three-way stop. Um, so yeah, and must have been a bonanza for, um, uh, for the, for the wrecker services around town. Now, what if the wrecker services around town, you know, I, I thought about something. Uh, what if the wrecker services around town uh, were organized and, uh, got together with the, with certain, uh, high city officials and uh bribe them uh through a their organizational dues fund and uh contributed to their uh campaigns or otherwise bribe them uh to disable certain amounts of the traffic signals around town so they would uh have their little bonanza uh periodically and uh, raise their revenues at the expense of course of people's, um, uh, you know, people's convenience and their money and raising insurance rates on everybody. But the record of this record services could do this in order to raise money for themselves and basically draw money away from people and insurance companies and whoever and body shops, um, for all or all around town. That would be very messed up. But uh, don't think the NRA isn't doing exactly the same thing. Okay, Don't think that uh, the uh, private jail lobbies aren't doing the same things because the private jail lobbies are actually running the detention centers on the border. So not to say that they told Hillary Clinton in 2009 to undo an election and install a draconian puppet in Honduras uh, in 2009 and basically create the conditions along with all these deported um, youth offenders uh, who were in MS-13 in Los Angeles back to their countries of origin uh, to basically create a, a terror state um, in Honduras with all the you know homicides. Uh, going on and no civil protections. So this, of course, creates caravans. And once the caravans come, uh, they, of course, are come into the waiting arms of the Border Patrol, who, unlike their uh, true legal calling, funnel these people into detention centers and deprive them of their due process according to U.S. law, and then, of course, according to, con to, um, to, uh, uh, as, uh, to our treaties, uh, you know, to, uh, about how to treat people who seek asylum. And, of course, it's pretty, knowing stuff on the ground, it's pretty, you know, easy to conclude that these people really are running away from di direct threats of their life. But anyway, so the detentioners made a bonanza on it or continue to make a huge bonanza on it, uh, like the private jails, uh, like the Rutgers did in Memphis during the week of uh, during the month of February. Rucker services made a bonanza in the month of February here in Memphis because of the mayhem. Now, so what so wouldn't you think that 
Now, it wouldn't, they were probably not as organized. It's not, it's not plausible for the record services in Memphis, Tennessee to be all organized enough for them to cause people to get into more accidents because of how whatever shenanigans they may have about not nearly as possible as Raytheon and uh, General Dynamics and Boeing to uh, lobby people to continue uh, wars of uh, or military adventures in Afghanistan and other parts of the Middle East, um, let's say Palestine, and sell them their bombs or wherever in Yemen, uh, because these are U.S. made bombs dropped by the Saudis in Yemen, um, uh, because of the Saudis uh, basically uh, sectarian rivals um, on their peninsula, on the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, this would, there wouldn't, you know, definitely we wouldn't have the incentives to, uh, sell bombs to Syria, to Israel, to basically try and take over a larger part of Syria beyond the Golan Heights. No, they wouldn't have. Yes, they, of course they would have the incentive to, they said that they, you know, peace is terrible for that industry. It's terrible. And we have not had a lot of peace since, um, uh, the towers fell for sure. There's been uh, a constant exercise of tremendous sales in advanced weapons, um, n not to mention to Ukraine. <laughs> but no, it's it's not necessarily the uh, you know the uh, the defense contractors don't have as much influence necessarily on the U.S. State Department to do shenanigans. Uh, there are, you know, as much, well, they do, but they don't have, a, they don't have as much influence as the oil companies. <gasps> wow. The oil companies, you know, with what zeal Joe Biden proclaimed a few weeks ago before this, all this stuff really came to a head in Ukraine, that there will be no such and such pipeline open from the number two pipeline open from Russia uh, to Germany. And Germany gets um, probably a third of its natural gas uh, to heat its homes during the winter from Russia. How convenient that we waited until after the death throes of winter for all this stuff to, to go down. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. It's that vegan burger that I had for brunch today. Um, so, um, incredible, incredible. So yeah, don't get it twisted. It's not the Russian oligarchs, it's the U.S. oligarchs, United States oligarchs who make the big money from there being mayhem, okay? We are like the dude in the Allstate commercials walking around and causing stuff to go down but for the profit of certain special interests we're back to special interests there are a lot of america a lot of very high billionaires have special interests in there being war in there being abs abject mayhem in there being bombs dropped in there being misery what's happening in ukraine has been in the works in the oven, has been baking in the oven for seven years. Look it up. What's happening in Ukraine has also been happening in Yemen, had happened in Libya, had happened in part in, in Honduras, had happened, it is happening now in Syria, it has been for 11 years, had happened in Afghanistan for 20 years, um, happened twice in Iraq, with similar grave consequences for their population. I hope that the lower 95% of the United States gets the connection between mayhem and threats, supposed threats to our security and our happiness as people of the United States and the shenanigans wrought for the interests of the big 
political donors and powerful of this country. So, your boy Fran Tinoco, uh, giving you a little bit of my thoughts, hopefully to raise your consciousness and make you a little smarter than you were 10 minutes and 10 seconds ago. Bye.